Hello, I'm Mark Ulano. Um, I'm a filmmaker and uh, also a specialist in, in narrative sound recording for feature films. And I'm blessed to be here at Fest in Espino, Portugal. And I am very happy to have this opportunity to share this time with my friends. Okay. So, tell me about uh, your, the context the of look your here, yes. here in, in, in Portugal, in, in Espino. In the well, I learned um, that I was invited here. Um, there was a, a fellow who I knew from uh, uh, a few years ago because in my prior parts of my career I was the president of the Cinema Audio Society and also president of the uh, Sound Union in Los Angeles for, for motion picture. Um, and apparently we hit it off and he recommended to the head of the festival that uh, they invite, invite me to come and be part of the, uh, the master class training program here. Um, and it happened to be coincidentally exactly at the time in my career where I am spending a, a great deal of time uh, in workshops with directors and producers about the use of sound to tell stories in cinema. So um, it was a, a, a very auspicious connection and um, the experience has actually been better than the anticipation. There's been a very great uh, community of filmmakers here uh, at all levels, from, from you know, 25 year veterans to first timer film students and everybody in between. But we all have the same religion of making films and, and so that passion has been a sort of a universal uh, tribal connection that uh, I, I enjoy very much. You've talked to a lot of uh, people, what do they ask you? What, what do you do? Um, Different things. They, the, one is, you know, um, how do I, as a director, think about this work that you bring to, to my film? Uh, another is, there's a great interest in anecdotes of different experiences I've had on different films with different directors and different stories. Um, and, and the third is just uh, kind of a philosophical conversation about the life in movies and how do we um, balance the intense, obsessive, compulsive passion of being in this work, um, which is a combination of the circus, the opera, the military, and uh, you know, construction companies, um, and the rest of our lives. You know, showing up for our relationships to our children, our family, our spouses, and um, and to me, this is a constant conundrum for us all in the arts: is how do we not let our own uh, um, obsessions drive us away from our own needs as humans? How do we bring the two together? And I think it's an ongoing piece of work that, like marriage and other relationships, you always are working at. And so that's a good conversation. But sound, it's an obsession or a passion? Yes. <laughs> the two. <laughs> sound is an obsession and a passion. I come originally, uh, I'm a second generation musician. My father is a very famous uh, jazz musician, writer, teacher uh, in New York City. Um, uh, uh, and I studied with him for four years as a private uh, student, as all his other students. I didn't get any special, you know, I had to get on the bus and go to his studio in, in New York and then, you know. Um, and, it, and it was a wonderful introduction to the idea of becoming a disciplined in your instrument, becoming uh, good at a thing so that it becomes the platform to grow into other things. And by the time I hit my 13th or 14th year, I was, you know, four or five hours a day practicing on my instrument, but I fell in love at that point in making movies. I had a good mentor in junior high school and high school, um, and I was making movies on 16 millimeter and 8 millimeter, and won some awards, got, re got encouragement, um, became very close friends with another colleague, a filmmaker in high school, and went on to uh, film school in the early 1970s um, at a time when most people in the film industry had not come through that path. And I later kind of looked back and realized I was part of maybe the first generation of fine arts majors to come into the crafts of, tel of film and television um, with this passion as artists to make film, tell stories, and my career is sort of in two places. I direct documentaries, um, but I also tell stories um, in narrative form in feature film world, you know. Uh, and sound is one of the great instruments for that because it goes to the heart before it goes to the brain. And I love that. It's kind of a, a little bit conspiratorial, but it's, it's a way like music 
is very much connected to that. Um, to to bring people into the story, to connect the characters to the uh, to the audience, and so that the audience invests in these in these characters, the journey they're on, and the environment in which they have that journey. If this makes any sense, yes. and and so um, to do that every day, and to get you know income from that, or or more of the idea is the pleasure of it. Um, is, is to me the essence of happiness. To do what you love. Find what you love and do that thing. And then you are rewarding yourself by, uh, by living in the actuality of your dreams. You know, your children should see you have that kind of uh, a, a passion for a thing so that they may find their own. And your, your, your friends and your, you know, because if you don't do that, if you submerge those things in, a, in a, an important way, you're kind of committing a slow motion emotional suicide and I'm not a subscriber to that way of life I'm in another place so of uh, all your words what was the most satisfying if you have one? Oh my god uh, it's hard to answer that I, I look back and uh, how I'm still walking the planet is hard to uh, hard to uh, you know analyze but I've done over a hundred yeah. now it's over 150 films and television projects yeah. over the years over a 50 year period 45 year no 50 year I mean, it's 50 years um, and each is a community of artists. Each is a particular era in my life and has its own specialness that goes beyond the actual final outcome, the story that gets told to the rest of the world. So I have two parts of connection there. One is the actual journey of the experience and the other is the work. Um, I'm very proud of certain work, um, which may not be the most obvious work. I love a film I worked on called Super 8 with J.J. Abrams. Um, I'm known for my work on Titanic uh, with John, Jim Cameron. Um, I have spent 27 years working together with Quentin Tarantino and done all his movies since Jackie Brown and worked with him on other films before that that he was not directing. Um, these each and every one is a special uh, pearl in the necklace of my life, if you will. And so one over the other, not so much. Um, each one of those journeys and there are many others, um, is, is kind of a gift. And uh, the, the, if my ego will allow me to say this, and it will, because there's no stopping my ego, is that I was very privileged to live my, so far my life in the river and the flow of the river instead of on the side of the river watching the water go by. You know, I think that's the thing that we must try and do, actually make, make the time that we're here um, appreciated and valued because uh, it's not a rehearsal. We're here for a little while and so I've been very lucky, especially in my best and dearest friend um, and partner and career in life is a woman named Petrushka Miroslav who's a force of nature and a genius beyond uh, the obvious. So anyway, I, I'm very lucky in that yeah, regard. Uh, it seems that uh, you still now think that you have things to learn, that Every the, day. the directors have something to say, but you've worked with all the best directors, it's you that teaches something to them. Well, we, we, we should keep our brain growing and getting something new to happen all the time. I never come to a project with an ideology of approach. I come to a project hoping for discovery. What will I learn here? We've never done this shot before. Every shot is handmade by three or three hundred artists that come together to make this little piece of the mosaic for the audience, for the receivers of the story. And, and so um, in that is the opportunity for always something new coming across my, my awareness. And so uh, I, I don't believe in the idea of mastery. There is no such thing as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's more about staying a student always, you know. Segovia was, right, was practicing in his mid-90s and asked why. It was because he wanted to get better. He wanted to stay relevant. He wanted to be improving his potential as a musician, as an artist. I'm in the same space. I, I, the minute I lean on the past, as the armchair of my comfort is the minute I'm starting to figure out which grave do I want to be buried in <laughs> because, <laughs> because I've stopped moving forward and I don't want to do that. I want to, you know, stay in. Uh, it seems that some directors don't give uh, much uh, credit to, to sound. Uh, this is self-destructive and it does happen because sound is part of their creative palette and if they you know, this will be my prejudice, but I don't apologize for it. If 
an artist is amputating a piece of their creative tool set, whether it's in the individuals they bring to the orchestra or if it's uh, even just a, a, a mechanical aspect, um, that limitation, if it's done unconsciously without, without purpose, um, is sort of an avoidance in a certain way. If, they, if it's done with a clarity of, I'm going to exclude this element because it's not relevant to the story or the piece I'm working on right now. Now that's a creative decision and deserves all the respect that it can get. So I look to see, not with judgment, about the absence of awareness to sound by directors, but more about the awareness overall of the movie and how they use all of the tools lenses, lighting, performance, you know. I look at us when we make a movie, it's all about live performance on the set. Not just in front of the camera, mm -hmm. behind the camera. There's a whole army of performing artists that are there in connection with capturing those performances and visual elements in front. And together, we do tell the story. You can't do this without that. And you can't do that without that. So, um, and I look for that, the holistic approach to making movies. And so when a director is not engaged in that aspect, in the back of my mind, I am being judgmental because I'm wondering if it's because they don't have the training or if they look at it as something diminished and less significant instead of seeing, oh my God, that is such a good way for me to communicate to my audience and can make connection. And what about this new digital uh, era? It's, it's getting uh, easier or difficult to work sound? Uh, neither. I think it's oils and, and watercolors. These are, different, these are different mediums, but they're all about doing something humans have been doing for 50,000 years, and that's telling stories. We are the present-day stewards of storytelling, is the way I see it. Um, what that means is, these machines and these technologies, they're always in progression and evolving and we need to keep being students of them and learn them. But what really matters, in my opinion, is the story itself. What are we doing to reveal the human condition, how we deal with each other, relationships, events, politics, um, you know, the span of life, you know, just philosophy. Stories are the way, I think, for the tribe, the culture to move forward, to share what has been learned with those who are coming after us and to maybe grow socially and psychologically in ways, even if the world right now is not exactly showing much evidence of that, uh, <laughs> it's, it's also part of the cycle. We will be learning from these difficult times the way our, our ancestors and parents and grandparents learned from their difficult times. And so in that can be some optimism about hard times. They're a learning moment. I'm going downstairs to Nuno's presentation. It's just down in the room, so okay. I guess I'll see you around. Yes. Okay. I'm finishing, so just five minutes. So. Okay, great. Tell me, uh, please, uh, one funny story you have on all these films that you remember today and you still love. <laughs> wow. That's hard because there are many. <laughs> uh, you know, what is, what is funny is, uh, and also it's very subjective, what's funny yes, to one person yeah. is not necessarily funny to another. Um, I will tell you a story, it may not be funny, but I'll tell you a thing that I am very happy to have had the good fortune. The, the, we just finished two movies this past year, one was Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon, and that was followed by I Want to Dance with Somebody, the Whitney Houston biofilm. Yes. A year and a half, two years before, we had two movies in the theaters also. One was Ad Astra, mm -hmm. yes. um, James Gray's movie with, with Brad Pitt and Tommy Lee Jones. And then right after that was a film with Quentin called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which was his ode, you know, his, his day for night, his ode to the love of the life in making the movies. And it was a, del it was a very special kind of experience. Aside from the movie itself, which was, has become beloved, it was a very special experience for those of us who have been part of that community of filmmaking with Quentin. Um, some of us, I've been there for 25, 26 years at the time. There were several other people that had that duration. Um, our script supervisor had been on every movie Quentin had done. And, and so, um, but we also 
quite a few of us had our adult children were a day playing on the movie in different capacities, production assistants or in cast or whatever, you know. And so here we were having done many movies together for, for maybe a, few, a couple of decades, working together again and working together again and having our, our adult children who grew up around those movie sets also there and doing this about a movie, about our love of movies. And I, I, it's, it's, it's very layered, you know, it's nested uh, thing. And so when something special like that happens, it's unique. You know this is like a once in a lifetime event. And even though you're doing it a long time, like falling in love, you can't put up the barrier. You can't be jaded. You have to appreciate the emotion of that. And, and so, I, uh, and Petrushka was working with, and Petrushka is not only my partner, but my wife of 42 years and boom operator and, and, and creative partner as my producer for documentaries. Um, and my regular boom operator, 25 years together. You know, this was a, commu a communal, creative, emotional event. And to see that be loved by others who just love the movie and don't have that other, you know, significant personal experience, it's so much bundled together into singularity that, that uh, so I express it that way. If it's not funny, that's okay. Okay, no, no, very good, very good. Thank you. Uh, what about the, the festival? What are your thoughts of this? It's terrific. It's a community of filmmakers. Um, it's operating on several levels. There's master classes here which are not purely designated to film students per se, but it's across the bar to seasoned filmmakers. Um, it's an opportunity for people to cross-pollinate their ideas, their projects, their hopes and dreams. Um, there's a sensitivity to the humanity of the individuals coming here. It's not a simple thing to bring people from all over the world to come together for a week and organize events around the idea of learning about film, sharing our films with each other, you know, the screenings are, are fantastic. Um, and we're in this beautiful location. We're in this, you know, the the land's end of the of, of Western Europe. The, we're where you know, you know, all of the the great Portuguese explorers. You know, the Henry the Navigator School is not too far from here, if I if I remember correctly. And and I look out on the ocean, and I can imagine the amazing vision and courage of saying how you know we're going to go there in a little wooden boat. <laughs> You know, and we don't know what's at the other side. Are we going to fall off the flat earth? You know, um, so to me, it's actually kind of a really good spot inspirationally for people who are also on on their creative journey. You know, it's a it's a big physical metaphor for the thing that we're all here and passionate about. And you've been here before in a very special moment of your life in Portugal. I've been in Portugal, <laughs> but know, but not in Espinho. Yes, this is the first time for me. I, um, you know, and I love the north. I like Viana do Castelo and and uh, you know uh, Evora and, and you know. And it's been a long time since I've been here. But I also have recently moved to Europe. So um, I I live part of the year in in the U.S. and part of the year in in Europe. And um, for me, it has the most com you know. I don't know what to say. The, 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 it, it, it's emotionally very, com, you know, enjoyable. I, I, I feel at home. I am at home. So, yes. thank you, Mark. Okay. We could be here for hours, but <laughs> well, you didn't shut me up. Shut me up. You're, you're up and I'll <laughs> it's expecting you. Yes. Can, can I take a picture with you? Sure. Mark? Of course. I'm yeah. sorry. No. No.